What led you to write this? You know, I was, I'm a third generation firefighter. I retired out in 2006. And about a month after I retired, uh, I had a visitation from the Lord. And in that visitation, the Lord uh, showed me that there was going to be things that I was going to write that would affect my walk and the walks of others. And about four months after that, I got a debilitating illness. Um, I got really bad sick. And uh, like four or five years, I was bedridden for four or five days at a time. I couldn't eat for four and five days at a time. And then I went to doctor after doctor. They couldn't figure out what was going on with me. And long story short, I found Dr. Colbert. And uh, he started to get me back on the road to health. But before that time, about April 28, 2011, I wrote a prophecy called the Trump Prophecy. It said that Donald Trump was going to be uh, president of the United States. So one thing led to another, and I had given the prophecy to Dr. Colbert and Mary, and they took kind of like, kind of the ball and ran with it, and uh, thought maybe we need to write a book about it. This is fascinating. Uh, so you, is, uh, you, you had a vision? Yeah, I, I had a vision. His visitation from the Lord Himself. Uh, he, 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 the Spirit of God, visited me, and uh, He was showing me things that an angel had been assigned to me. And that uh, there were things that I was going to write that would affect my walk and the walks of others, uh, prophetic words or like the book, stuff like that. All right. So you're calling this the Trump prophecies. Um, lead us through the book. We haven't got a whole lot of time here, but what do you want the readers to take away from this? Well, it's a little bit about my bio uh, as far as me being a firefighter and uh, some of the things that I went through, because I know there's a lot of sick people out there uh, physically ill that think that they can't do anything for the kingdom of God. And that is the farthest thing from the truth. And, you know, I want to encourage people. I've never been to Bible college. I've never been to seminary school. I don't have a degree of any kind hanging on my wall whatsoever. I am just an everyday, normal, common person that has yielded himself over to the Lord Jesus Christ to use in whatever capacity that he wants. And it doesn't matter. Uh, I want to encourage people, if they're sitting in a hospital right now, if they're in a bed, they're bedridden like I was, God can use you right where you're at. And proof of that is that when I wrote the Trump prophecy, April 28, 2011, I was sick. I mean, I was still almost bedridden at that point when I wrote that prophecy. And if you would have told me back then that I'd be sitting here doing a, a TV interview or a radio interview over this, I'd have, I'd have thought, man, you're, there's just no way. So I want to encourage people out there. God will use you right where you're at. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, if you don't mind, what, what were you diagnosed with? Uh, I had a very low thyroid. I had severe adrenal burnout from the fire service. Uh, I was at a fire station uh, in Orlando. We were in the ghettos. We turned over 12,000 calls a year out of that one fire station alone. I had uh, hormones of a 70-year-old at uh, 39. Wow. All right, let's go to the book, uh, Trump Prophecies. Uh, you, th you felt led of the Lord that he was going to win before he won, and here we are today. Where do you think this is going? What, what, share with us what you felt like the Lord gave you. Well, the Lord showed me that Donald Trump would be the president of the United States and that America as a whole would begin to return and begin to prosper like never before. Now, that doesn't mean to say that we're not going to have issues because we're always going to have issues. But overall, like the economy, it would come back. The dollar would come back. Uh, our relationship with Israel would be healed. Uh, it would be stronger than ever before. We're seeing all that taking place right now. Um, there's other prophecies that are in the book that I've written that people can go to my website and download for free. Uh, you know, basically God's saying that um, America is going to be used as the end time hub. You know, there's, there's a whole D-Day component or a whole World War II component to this thing. And I go into in the book. But, you know, like England was the, the hub by which the D-Day invasion was launched. America will be the hub by which the end time harvest will be launched for the spiritually oppressed peoples of the earth to free those people. Okay, because we're hearing a lot uh, when it comes to Bible prophecies. And I realize eschatology is... <laughs> Uh, pretty critical to a lot of people and very subjective. Right. However, um, one thing that I have been um, concerned about is, is the lack of the end time harvest, as you put it. A lot of people mm. saying we're there and the Lord is coming soon and this, it's all over. It's just going to get bad and then it ends. But if I read the scriptures properly, uh, properly there is an end gathering before it's all over. I mean, there, there's quite a harvest. And so you, what I'm hearing you say right. is America's going to play a pivotal role in that. Right. And, and here's where I think a lot of people make the mistake is that we misinterpret things sometimes, especially God's timing. And the thing is that the army of God, well, I call the army of God, the body of Christ and the army of God are two different things. And I don't have time to go into all that. It's in the book. But, you know, the army of God has risen to the occasion. We've repented on behalf of the people in the land. We cut the head off that snake November 8th. <clears throat> now, if America was under judgment, Hillary Clinton would have won the, won the election, and it would have all been over with. But that was not the case. 
But so God is going to take America on a path where we will prosper. Again, it doesn't mean we're not going to have some issues along the way, but we will have what we need to go after the spiritually oppressed peoples of the earth. That would suggest uh, some countries that harbor the terrorism. Yes, I, I wrote another. I wrote another prophecy called Energy Energy that America and Israel will be the number one energy producers in the world. And what I did not know when I wrote it, because I wrote this last year uh, at some point, and when I said that all these nations that are making their money off the oil, especially OPEC nations that are using this money to fund terrorism, their oil wells will go dry and their finances too. Now, when Donald Trump, uh, the President Trump, went over to Saudi Arabia on his first visit, what I did not know was in that huge arms deal that they did, that nobody could figure out why Saudi Arabia was buying all these arms. Well, it was because their finances were about to, to dry up. Their wells are about to dry up. They had to do it while they had the money. And when I read that, or, or it was on Fox News, my, I mean, I'm out, my mouth dropped. So, I mean, all these, all these Middle Eastern countries, their wells will go dry and their finances too, and they will have to come to Israel and America to get their energy. <clears throat> Okay, there's been quite um, somewhat controversy, Mark, about uh, President Trump's um, faith. I guess that would be the simplest way to put it, or his relationship right. with Christ. Some people call him a baby Christian. I mean, you know, you, you know enough, you follow the news. And others have likened him out of the book of Isaiah 45 and 44 and 45, that he's kind of like the King Cyrus of our day, where God literally took a non-believer and, and right. used him to save Israel. Is there any is there any similarities there in your thinking? This video belongs to lordsprophecy.com. Please visit our website for more update. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, Mary Colbert sits on his spiritual advisory board and I can tell you 100% that he is in fact a born again Christian. Uh, he matter of fact he made the statement to his spiritual advisory board the uh, the other day that he wants to literally when he leaves office, he wants his legacy to go to be that he wants to be known as the most praying president in American history. Okay, some would question his uh, conduct and attack against person. <laughs> well, you know it. You see the right. tweets. Right. I mean, it's, well, it's, yeah. I mean, how do you how do you weigh this out? Well, I, it, it's very simple. I mean, all people have to do the evangelicals. I mean, I, I've seen evangelicals attack this man over how he uh, attacks people or how he speaks to people or he'll call people names. Well, read your Bible, folks. The fact of the matter is the Lord Jesus himself called people names. He called them brood of vipers. He called them hypocrites. Uh, I mean, you know, so, I mean, you have to understand, or people have to understand that the country is in a huge mess, and it's going to take a bull in a china shop with a very heavy hand to weed out this corruption, which is what you're going to see happen. I wrote another prophetic word called time is up for those who are corrupt. The depth of this corruption is so deep, so big, and so wide, it's going to take someone with a heavy hand in order to clean this out. And God himself is using Donald Trump to clean this out. It's God that's doing it. He's just doing it through Donald Trump. Um, you know, there's an old saying, and I've said it uh, quite a few times, you don't break God's laws, God's laws break you. So what we're seeing now is that we've been breaking God's laws, now he's gonna break us. Well, you know, uh, it's, it's America that's not under, uh, people, uh, there's, there's different types of judgments. And again, you know, everybody wants to see America burn, which I don't understand. Why would, in the world would you ever want to see your own country burn? I, right. I have a rescue mentality. I want to go out and I want to ask God for more time so that I can affect a rescue. Right. So it's the systems of America that are under judgment. It's the church. It's the leadership that's under judgment right now. <clears throat> you know, judgment starts in the house of the Lord. And that's what we're fixing to see happen. We're seeing it happen now. We're seeing a mass exodus from the church. The yeah. reason the country is in the mess it's in now is because the church has not done its job. It's the remnant that has rose up and has helped save America. Um, very well said. Uh, the president the other day uh, received incredible criticism because at the lighting of the national Christmas tree, he actually said that Christmas is the celebration of God's gift to earth in his son, Jesus Christ. And because he said that, um, the liberal press came down on them pretty hard. Now, we haven't even seen that in presidents say that, that we're known to be Christians. Uh, we didn't see right. it from President Bush. We didn't see that from Jimmy Carter. We didn't see that from uh, others that were in the White House, but he said it. Right, right. And, and again, I go back to the fact that he is, in fact, a born-again Christian. You know, you have to understand that we have not had leadership in this country uh, in what, the last five presidents since Ronald Reagan, 
So, I mean, these five presidents just came out through this Hurricane Harvey relief thing and showed their true colors, including both Bushes. So what you're seeing happen right now is that you're seeing true leadership in its purest form come forth in President Trump. And the enemy's not liking it. Mm-hmm. They are being exposed. God is going to root out any and all corruption, and it's going to, going to be dealt with. You will see military-style tribunals break out in order to handle all of this. That's quite a prophecy. What What, what does your book say about the church and its role into where we are today? Uh, I, I go into a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, in, in one of the chapters, you know, I talk about how the, the 501c3 is a demonic contract that the church entered into, and this is part of the reason why the church is not flowing in, in power and authority. Uh, you know, you, they, the church has a slavery mentality. They want to be uh, governed over versus being or being a governor, governor, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, the church has to come out of this system. You know, we're we're making forward progress with Donald Trump signing stuff, you know, getting rid of the Johnson Amendment, but there's still other issues at stake, like being incorporated. You know, you've you've got two levels of government, and, you know, you've got the federal government and you've got the state government at the state level. And these churches that are 501c3 and, and incorporated, they have two levels of governing over them. So if they truly want to govern, how can they govern when you're being governed over? You know, they want to sit there and they say, well, Jesus is the Lord and Savior, or he is the head of my ministry, <clears throat> but he's really not. If you're a 501c3 or you're incorporated, the federal government is, the state is, you're in covenant with bail. All right, Mark, one quick question before I run out of time. Did the Lord ever say anything to you about where we are with uh, uh, abortion in this country and how that's impacted us? Yes, uh, because I wrote a prophecy saying that there would be five Supreme Court justices that Donald Trump would appoint to the Supreme Court. Uh, Before it happened, I said one would die, one would retire, and three would be caught up in a scandal that they have to be removed. Of course, it was a couple months afterwards that Scalia died. And then once God appoints these five Supreme Court justices, he will reform the court and Roe versus Wade will be overturned. All right. The book is entitled The Trump Prophecies, put out by Mark Taylor and Mary Colbert. Check it out at the bookstores uh, and put out by Defender Press. Thank you, Mark, for your time. Let's stay connected. Very, very fascinating, to say the least. And um, stay sensitive, brother. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been an honor to be here. All right. Merry Christmas. Good to see you. Uh, You too. Thank you. We'll see you next time. 